large number of leather crafters turn their hobby into a part-time business. They make and sell their wares to friends, families, and co-workers. Many crafters also sell their items at farmers markets, rodeos, horse shows, and other special events. The challenge is always how to sell enough to pay for the booth rent. Well, no matter the skill level or the selling price of your primary line of merchandise, for example, it might be holsters and gun belts, these high priced items sometimes do not always sell. But the rent for the booth can always be paid from the sale of small, inexpensive items. Here are a few ideas for you. Smaller pieces of heavier leather can be turned into coasters, as you can see here. And uh, there's no end to the variety you can make to appeal to different people. Of course, the patriotic theme is always good with the eagle head. It's just very easy to make with some cova color, uh, some super sheen for a resist and an antique finish. Here's one we just did a, a resist on the edge and on the longhorn and another antique finish. This one we resisted the whole piece and then came back with an antique finish. Key fobs are also very good uh, items that uh, will help you pay for your booth rental. And of course here again you can see quite a variety of using cova color, uh, resist and antique, and here we have block dyed the edge. Here's another one where we've used some cova color, some resist. Here's one where it's uh, just antique, nothing else. And of course, here's one with a little bit of resist on the cross and on the border and then some antique. Here's a few items that you may never even think of. These are very small pieces of leather with your 3D stamps, various finishing things. These can be either a keychain or very popular with children, a zipper pull. The key to making small inexpensive items is to first of all take an item that doesn't require much leather and then the next thing you need to consider is how fast can you make it. In this case I'm just going to stamp a border on here. You notice that I have not even put a guideline. I'm just stamping about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Any number of border stamps you can use to make a wide variety of key fobs. After we have finished our border, we can use a three-dimensional stamp and uh, we make a pretty nice key fob. Now it's all ready in just a few moments. It's ready to apply a finish. If you would like to make something for the ladies, it's just a matter of putting a few flower stamps, as you see here. Take your swivel knife and make a few cuts. Now we'll make a few more cuts. Just a few arcs coming down to a center. Then we'll take one of the figure carving stamps that looks like leaves and do one, two, four, and now it's just a matter of taking an F916 uh, figure carving tool and simulate some grass. And that's how quick we can stamp a design that the ladies will like. Another item that's uh, easy and fast to make and quite inexpensive is uh, coasters. In this case, I'm just going to use a vayner and I will stamp a border on here with the vayner. Here again, no line needed, just stay about an eighth of an inch from the edge and 
stamp all the way around. Again, I'm going to use a three-dimensional stamp. The nice thing about the three-dimensional stamps, they're available on almost any subject you can dream of. With this uh, coaster, we can add a few more things. Here again, it's fast and easy. And here we have a nice coaster all ready to be dyed and finished. As you can see, on this piece I'm using a larger border stamp and again, No borderline, just stamping about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And on this one, I have put a nice longhorn. And here is another quick and easy design. Now I would like to give you some quick ideas on how to make some good-looking finishes and colors on your items. I'll first take uh, some white Kova color this eagle head and I will get just a little bit on the brush and kind of skim over the top as you see me doing here. We don't need to paint it too heavy, just kind of lightly. Next I will take some yellow and put it on the beak, again just lightly, and a little bit in the eye. And finally I will take some light brown, and again lightly over these lower feathers. And that's all we need to do the eagle head. And now I will use some uh, light blue to do the flowers. I'll just carefully put some light blue on the petals. Next, uh, we will use some Kelly Green, and we will, again, put it carefully into these small leaves. And then with an almost dry brush, we'll stroke in with the green on some of the grass here in the foreground. And now, with some yellow, I will just put a little dot in the center of our flowers. One good way to make a really nice uh, effect on uh, some of these things and do it quickly is to use the uh, EcoFlow leather dye. I'm using the Java Brown color right now, and I've got a, a block of two by two here with some old t-shirt wrapped around it and I'll put a little of the uh, brown dye on the pad and I will take most of it off on a paper towel. Now I can carefully rub the edge as you see me doing here, staying off the edge and then as uh, the block gets drier we can move it in a little further. And in any case, we want to leave the center part relatively natural. And I can take my dauber and I can tie the edge. Here's another trick to uh, do a nice finishing technique and uh, that's to take some 
EcoFlow Super Sheen, and with a brush, we can paint it on the this coaster staying inside of the border and covering everything inside the border, including the eagle. I'm doing the same thing now with the super sheen, only this time, rather than doing this area, I'm doing the outside border. This again will be a rather quick and very good looking effect you will see as we put antique finish on it later. And now with a smaller brush I will very carefully paint the longhorn head. I would like to introduce you to several uh, antique type finishes that we're going to use now. Uh, this first one is called All-in-One. It's an antique and finish combined. This other one is called Highlight Color Stain. Both of these are, a, are available in a multitude of uh, colors and as well as the gel antique. It is also available in many, many colors. If you remember this particular one, we block dyed the edge and then what I did, I covered the entire piece with Super Sheen. Now we'll take some of the gel antique and now you can see that we have very much brightened up the cuts and stamp impressions with the antique. For this next project we will use the medium brown gel antique and uh, if you recall we painted Super Sheen on the entire inner area of this coaster. Uh, we'll also use a dauber and a folded paper towel. Now we will first apply a liberal amount of the gel antique and like we did before we will make sure we get it down in all of the tool impressions and as we did before we will wipe with the paper towel. Now, as you, as you can see, the area where we applied the super sheen, it stands out very nicely. Also, please note, uh, especially note, how the eagle head stands out now that the antique has worked itself down in the tool impression. I dampened my towel just a little bit and took off more of the antique as you can see.